my name is Jamal Monaghi, any of his files in the name of the school. My background is Owen A. Uh, I'll just go back to introduce myself back to everything from the beginning. I'm not a cardiologist. I've never done a cardiology course in my whole life. So, any questions about what happened after this patient left ED? I don't know. <laughs> I started working in Barnsley, um, that was an experience. And I uh, moved down to Birmingham, uh, worked in Kiwi for a couple of years as an NU rep. Then I joined the South Coast team and I'm currently working in uh, Big So, what, what we're going to talk about is basically a um, few cases that I've been there for the past few years. And um, yeah, we're just going to go through them and see how it goes. So, I've got a question to start with. Um, how many here are airless positive? Can I see hands up, please? Perfect. So, it's almost all of you. Great. So, uh, what we're going to talk about today is not in the airless. So, uh, <laughs> sorry about the airless is not going to help you with the common cases. We're just going to try to think outside the box of the airless when it comes to the semi and see how it goes with that. Ready? Okay, case number one. Uh, so, You've got a 58 year old male patient presenting to ED with a cardiac sounding chest pain and sweating for five hours. And by the way, sweating in ED is bad. I've never come across any sweaty patients in A in ED and it was found to be something benign, <laughs> except in Egypt. So, <laughs> <laughs> this patient was found to be stable and the DCG showed ST elevation as one millimeter in V5. And V6. So, my question to you is Would you consider this a STEMI? Hands up, please. Three STEMI. So, four, 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 five, three STEMI, STEMI. Okay. Be want. brave. Okay. okay, next question. Do you think that this patient would qualify for no. PCI activation in your local hospital? Hands up, please, if yes. Good, we've got two. So, yes, so some of you thought that this is a STEMI, but they're not probably planning to activate PCR. Because Cardio will say no, right? Okay, let's, uh, let's talk about this. Uh, let's see what we're going to do for this. So, basically, I think the reason behind this confusion is the fact that we're all following the ALS definition about STEMI, which is fine. But unfortunately, in 2013, the American Heart Association guidelines and the American College of Cardiology Foundation guidelines has changed. They said two main changes. First, please use the J point as your reference point for the ST segment. Uh, not 40 milliseconds after it. Interestingly, when I, thought, when I saw this first time, I've discovered that I've been using the 2013 guidelines since 2007. I didn't even know that I had to go further up to the gym points. So that was the first change, that's fine. And second change was about the STEMI definition. They said one millimetre or more in two contiguous leads, except V2 and 3, in absence of left bundle and LVH. One millimetre is enough anywhere except V2 and V3. How about V2 and V3? Well, it depends upon the gender and the age. If you're a young male, and I mean Less than 40 by young. So, you have, uh, yes, less than 40 is young. So, um, 2.5 millimeters is fine. Uh, if you're above 40, then 2 millimeters is okay. Above that is bad. And if you're a female at any age, it's 1.5. So, we're talking about V2 and V3, not anywhere else. Anywhere else in the ACG, this is 1 millimeter. It's actually it. Good. So, fine. America's too far, uh, so that doesn't apply to us, and, um, and that is 2013. So let's, uh, let's talk about something else. Let's talk about the European Society of Cardiology Guidelines, considering that we are still in Europe. So uh, <laughs> this was another change. So 2017 guidelines, I've quoted this from them. So in the proper clinical context, ST segment elevation from the J point 
is considered susceptible to ongoing coronary artery acute occlusion in the following things. Two contiguous leads with ST elevation that is more than 2.5 mL in men with less than 40, more than 2 mL in um, milliliters in men more than 40, and 1.5 in women in lead beta 3, and or 1 millimeter anywhere else. So it is the same thing. 1 millimeter anywhere in the ECG is a STEMI, except V2 and V3. That's the bottom line. And this is from the European Society of Cardiology Guidelines 2017. So, if we go back to our case, when we had a patient who is 58, coming with a cardiac sound in chest pain and sweaty, don't forget that, vitally stable, what do you think when you see an ECG with 1 millimeter ST elevation and V1 and 2, V5 uh, and 6? Back to the question, would you consider this a STEMI? Hands up, please. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Would you have to get PCI in your local hospital? Hands up, please. Put that up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's the thing. That's the key. You know how to argue with them now. Good. And this was case number one. Let's move on to case number two. This time we've got a 64 year old male patient presented to ED with a body sound in chest pain and sweating for the last two hours. Again, it's another story. And again, the patient was vitally stable. Uh, the reason for me to keep saying vitally stable is because if the patient is vitally unstable with chest pain, that's bad enough for you not to think you meant. But the patient is vitally stable, so you've got the time to do stuff. So you've done an ECG, and this was the ECG. So, first question. Would you consider this a STEMI? Hands up, please. Please. Review in the back of your head the definition of stemming that you know. And please don't get biased by the previous case. So, again, would you consider this stemming? Hands up, please. Okay, that's, that's good. And uh, second question is would you activate PCI in your local hospital for this patient? And do you think? Hands up, please, if yes. Fine. Great. Let's talk about this. So, I kind of appreciate the reason for you to think that this is a STEMI because we've got an ST elevation in here. So we've got ST elevation in the L. And we've got ST elevation in V2. Plus, we've got some ST depression and T wave inversion in the inferior leads. So, there's an obvious elevation here. And the big question is going to be okay, they are elevated, but the definition of STEMI said two continuous leads. ADL and V2. Are they continuous? Sorry, hands up if yes. Okay, hands up if no, they're not. Fine, so that doesn't meet the STEMI definition. But, this is an occlusion in the first diagonal branch of the LAD artery. So they are. So ADL and V2 are leads that can, if you have elevation of both, that means something. It is not a lead from the lateral wall and a lead from the anterior wall. No, they can be continuous in this case. So this is a case. This is a pre-hospital ECG professional presented to Pool Hospital. For those of you who got no pool, so there's no cardiology in pool. So if you're thinking STEMI, then that applies to the ED stuff and the pre-hospital stuff, then it is both. And if you're thinking non-STEMI stuff, then pool. So this patient presented to me in pool ED with this ECG. And when I had a chat with a paramed about the ECG, I said, I think you've got an ST elevation in ADL, and I think you've got an ST elevation in B2, and I think your patient's got chest pain. He said, yeah, I've seen the elevation, but that doesn't meet the bypass criteria for a STEMI to save the patient to form a these are not contiguous leads. So I brought the patient to you. Uh, which is something that I do understand, but I think we need to think about uh, the pre hospital guidelines in terms of these sorts of things, because basically that was a waste of the patient's time and my department. So this patient ended up transferred to Portland Hospital 
for a PCI, but with a bit of a delay, that could have been avoided just by passing through and going to the proper hospital. If we appreciate that ABL and B2 are contiguously. So, there are many papers about this. This is a paper from 1996. And um, basically, what they said here is ST elevation ABL and B2, what's the problem by ST elevation of B3 to B5? So just ABL and B2, famous occlusion of the first diamond branch. Actually, ST elevation ABL alone <coughs> with ST depression in B2, that's an occlusion of the obtuse marginal branch. And look at the negative creative value and also creative value of the two. So there is a lot of evidence to support this. So that is something that you need to consider. And please don't ask me why these things are not in the LF. So, how about the object we're talking about? It is this lovely one down here. It supplies the anterior wall of the heart. It is not a small, tiny artery. It is an important one. So, yeah. So back to case number two. This was the ECG. This patient, you think, has got five and chest pain. Would you consider this as a STEMI hands on please? And would you have to PCI in your local hospital? Yeah, and it's all done to us separately. Great. So, that was case number two. Let's move on to case number three. Are you all okay with me so far? Am I too fast? <laughs> By the way, it, it is meant to be interactive, so be free to interrupt me and ask any time when I'm there. Uh, <laughs> so, another case from Food Hospital. Uh, this was a lovely gentleman, 89 uh, year old, actually um, completely independent. Uh, his background was only hypertension, nothing else. Presented with a cardiac sounding chest pain and sweating for two hours. So, I do stable as always, and this was his ECG. And please, please, don't get Biased by the fact that I presented two ECGs that didn't look like they were STEMI and you found that they were STEMI. So there's a good chance that the coming one is not a STEMI. <laughs> <laughs> so, I guess I'm going to give you 10 seconds to have a proper look. And then I'm going to ask you the two questions that you know as. Yes, I know this one. Okay. Question number one. Would you consider this a STEMI? Yes. Please, be honest. Yes. Hands up. Okay, we've got a few honest people here. Perfect. So, next question is, would you have to take BCI for this one? Yes. Yes. Have you done it before? Can I see hands up? But not for, for, for a similar ECG to activate BCI, not for activating BCI. No. Hands up or if you've done it before? Successfully? You asked, yes. Yeah, I'll go with yes. I'll go with yes. Well, it took a while. Uh, great. Let's talk about the ECG then. Let's talk about how managers that we have in this ECG because that is another patient who ended up in poor hospital. So in the wrong hospital. Uh, and this is, by the way, the pre hospital ECG. So again, I think this is something that should have been picked up by the uh, ambulance crew. Uh, first abnormality here is ST elevation in the R. So, next up normality here is a slight ST elevation in B1. Do you agree? Yeah. <laughs> Definitely the ST elevation in B1 is higher than the ST elevation in B1. Do you agree? Yeah. Okay. Good. And uh, I, I wanted to start with this because I know that what's going to catch the eyes in this ECG is basically the ST depression. That is just diffuse in most of the other leads and quite significant. And probably that, that was the distracting thing for the ambulance group because when I discussed this ECG with them, I tend to do this, um, they, uh, they, they said they haven't seen the, um, the SC elevation in the R, so they were focusing on the SC depression everywhere else. And when I showed them the SC elevation, they saw it, but they said, well, it's, it's ABR. So, fine. The lead's in the right place. So, yeah, yeah. so let's talk about ST elevation in ABR. Is it important <coughs> to know about yes. ABR? Yes. yes. Please, for those of you who 
know me? <laughs> I, yeah, I, yeah, when it comes to any disrespect against ABR, <laughs> Triple vessel disease, sort of. So, yeah, so you've got three things to think about. First, left main coronary occlusion, especially if you've got some ST elevation in B1 as well, uh, or if you've got AC elevation in ABR and in ABL. So, left main coronary occlusion. Anything else? Second one is proximate LAD occlusion, so not too far from the left main. And the last is triple vessel disease. Actually, this is the worst MI that you'll see. There is nothing good about any of the three. Okay, we're talking about big vessels, we're talking about the widow baker, the LAD, and it's a proper solution. <coughs> so when it comes to ST elevation ABR and depression in the rest of the leads and chest pain, please get excited. This is bad. And I will show you how bad it is, but let me give you some evidence first because some of us didn't hear about this before, which is not good. So, again, back to the 2013 American Heart Institution guidelines for STEMI, they said that multiple, uh, for multi lead ST depression uh, with coexistent ST elevation in lead ABR has been described in patients with left main or proximal LAD occlusion. Uh, and another part, they put this table about indications for fibrinolytic therapy, so basically thrombolysis for STEMI patients. And they said it is harmful to thrombolyze any patient who's got ST depression and ACG, except in two cases. First, if you're dealing with posterior wall STEMI, so there will be ST depression, but actually that is a posterior innovation, or when it comes to ST innovation in the ABR, that is an indication for thrombolysis. So that's some evidence. Let's go to the European one. So that is a nice table uh, about atypical ECG presentations that should prompt PCI. And in the last bit, they said that ischemia due to left main coronary occlusion or multiple cell disease happens with ST depression in or B1. That is left main or left main equivalent coronary obstruction or severe triple three vessel disease. So the bottom line is this is a STEMI and it's a bad one. So why is it bad? Few things. First, the higher the elevation, the higher the mortality. This is my patient. So he's got about two millimeters of elevation, so his mortality rate was about 22.2%. So quite high. Second, mortality without treatment is about 70%. Medical treatment, including thrombolysis, doesn't always work. Giving repeated reality. Because most PCI is going to require an emergency system. Classic bleeds are not big fans of depression everywhere in the chest pain, we're done. This is a case as a post cardiac arrest. This is the post the post ECG. And uh, as you can see, we've got SCR 